Good morning and welcome to this first week of Advent. I have a few announcements to make about Christian education. Um, we had a very nice um, turnout for our Sunday school replacement, which was a thankfulness event that we held last Sunday afternoon. Um, we had a VBS type uh, set up for it with different sections with snacks and crafts and a Bible story. And I hope the kids enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, we will not have anything for December. I know everyone's got many things going on and um, so does leadership. But um, you should be receiving some mail from me. So look for that if you didn't get it already. Um, and we will come up with some new things for the new year, uh, which will be announced in, in the near future. Um, in terms of youth group, we have youth group today. Tonight is movie night, 4 o'clock on Discord. Uh, and we will be having a Christmas theme movie to, um, to be announced. Um, so hope to see you all there. Um, we had a really good time the last time we did this. It was a couple months ago. So uh, hopefully we get a nice turnout for that. We also have youth group next Sunday um, because it's first Sunday of December. And we will be doing um, the second round of craft night. Last time we did a paint night. This time we have some wooden crafts and things. So get out your uh, kits that we gave you a few months ago. And all your supplies should be in there um, for next Sunday. Same time, 4 o'clock, all on Discord. Um, in terms of adult CE, our screw tape letters discussion is ongoing. If anyone um, wants to join, hasn't done it yet, um, there's certainly no reason you can't join us now. The um, letters, while somewhat building on each other, are readable, each on their own chapter, and um, the discussions are largely moral, and uh, you can join in any time. So if anyone wants to be in the Screw Tape Letters uh, group, there's still several weeks left. Um, feel free to email me and let me know, and I'll put you into the group so you get the notices. Um, anyone who's missed some weeks, feel free to come back. Um, we didn't have our discussion last week because of the Thanksgiving service that was being broadcast at the same time. So we will be reconvening this Tuesday, 7 o'clock, uh, on Zoom with Chapter 20, I believe. So um, if anyone has any questions about that, please let me know. I am also working on some um, new programming for next year. Um, so we will be looking, exploring the history of the church uh, in a six-week se session um, that will be in February. And this is going to be done by Discord. So um, I would like to start getting people onto Discord. And anyone who's interested in learning more about Discord will probably have a brief intro to Discord type thing sometime leading up to this uh, session in February. So more information on that should be coming. I've been um, owing Susan an updated blurb for the bulletin for weeks. So hopefully this week will be the week. <laughs> um, but if anyone has any questions about any CE or any suggestions or something they'd like to see or something they'd like to lead, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Please feel free to get in touch with me at any time. Thank you. And a few additional announcements for this morning. This Wednesday is our annual joint sessions and deacons meeting, which will be at 7 p.m. on Zoom at our regular length. That is the deacon's regular time. It is early for session, so just make a note so that you're there with us on time. We're still collecting canned goods, which we do all of the time, but we've gotten word that in particular the community is in an unusual level of need right now. And so there are bins in the breezeway between this building and the offices that are labeled, and we'll get those over to the food bank at St. Mark's. Uh, if you want to take things directly to St. Mark's, that's all right, too. They have a collection point that's open all of the time as well. But we know that the demand is high, the need is great, and we're very grateful for whatever generosity you're able to provide for that project. Um, and related to that also, of course, our angel trees are coming soon. Um, Marion has been in conversation with the Family Management Center in Chester about the needs of the moms and the kids that are staying in the shelter for the holiday season this year. And then one last note, just thanks to everyone who came out yesterday and decorated and made this space beautiful for Advent to help cheer us in that 
small but very significant way. Now let's spend a moment centering ourselves in prayer as we come to God in worship. to worship. The hour has come for you to wake from your slumber, because, because our, our salvation, salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. Today the day is, is almost, almost here. here. Come, let us worship God. Please join in singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We will be singing verses 1, 2, 5, and 6.
We light the candle of hope as we wait, await the coming of Jesus, who is the source of hope. We give, we give thanks, thanks for, for the, the gifts, gifts of hope, of hope even, even in times of despair. of despair. Please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, you hold all days in your hands, and you embrace us in your everlasting arms. You break into our world in ways that are surprising and transformative. In a tired and violent world, you are hope. In a hectic and busy world, you are peace. In a cold and dark world, you are comfort and you are light. You find us when we are lost. You show us your ways when we are in search of vision. You bring love into this world and you nurture the relationship between us. And so we worship you as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, this day, forever. Amen. Please be seated. coming of Christ this Advent. We remember all the ways that we fall short of God's will for us in the way that we live, in the way that we think, 
in the way that we treat one another. So let us join together in the prayer of confession found printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Redeeming God, we confess that waiting is difficult for us. We want to be comfortable in this festive season, but the pandemic keeps us anxious and unhappy. We complain about our own troubles and close our eyes to the suffering of others. Forgive us for ignoring truths we do not want to see. Forgive us for seeking our own comfort at the cost of others. Give us eyes to perceive the great need within our own community. Give us eyes to see the deep need within our own lives. Turn our hearts to you again and again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The good news of Jesus Christ is for all people. There is nothing we have done, nothing we will ever do that will separate us from the love of God made known in Jesus Christ. This love is yours. So live in love as forgiven and forgiving people. Thanks be to God. today amid the advertising of the season, tempting us to buy gifts, suggesting new desires to satisfy our longings. But God has given us the love that truly satisfies in Christ Jesus. And so we offer whatever we have to share, knowing these gifts can fill the deepest hungers in the world that God loves and bring hope to lives in despair. Let us pray together. God of hope, we offer you our gifts with our thanks that your love never goes out of style. Your presence is never beyond our budgets. Bless what we bring with your spirit and enrich their impact in a world with desperate needs. May we shine as symbols of the unending hope we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord and friend. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your presence in our world and in each one of our lives. We thank you that even when times are confusing or difficult, that you walk beside us and you go before us. And in all things, you hold us in the palm of your hands. 
So help us also to listen to your voice and to respond to your call. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first reading this morning is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Thus ends the reading. And then a reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This too is God's word to us. This morning, as we take our first step into the Advent season, we lit the candle of hope. And thank goodness, too, because at this point in 2020, I am so ready and beyond ready for hope and new hope and different hope. I'm so ready for any hint that things are going to change and improve. Even before all the extra challenges of this particular year, Christian hope was one of my personal favorite ideas. I use a verse about hope from the book of Romans as my standard benediction at the close of worship. I have a necklace with four little charms, one letter on each to spell out hope. For me, it's very helpful and very comforting hold on to the idea that how things are in this particular moment isn't how things will be when God has the final word. That sin and oppression and deception and selfishness and bigotry often rule the moment in this life, but that it won't last. Hope promises that the hurt and ugliness in this moment aren't God's will for me, for you, for our siblings all around the world when otherwise it can be tempted to think that things are the way they are because that's how they are meant to be. Christian hope instead reminds me that in God, healing is possible and repentance and change and new beginnings are possible, that growth is possible and life can be better and we can be better, that the struggles of our past don't represent God's will for our futures. To me, hope is why we don't just give up or give in to despair. Hope is what can make these weeks of Advent meaningful and powerful. That although God was always present in the world, the world had to wait until the fullness of time for the different experience of God's presence in the birth of Christ. And although we live on the other side of the resurrection, and can enjoy God's presence in our lives, we also have to wait 
for the different experience of God's presence when we will see God face to face in the end. Right now, lions do in fact eat lambs when they get the chance. And so lambs are rightly suspicious of lions and unwilling and uninterested in lying down with them. Right now, it would be a really bad idea for a cow to let its children visit with bears because bears, in fact, consider them to be a tasty treat. And a nursing child can, cannot play over a poisonous snake's den without risking tragedy. And so we wait. Christian hope tells us that in God's time, they will lie down together and violence will end and the vulnerable, all of the vulnerable of the world will be safe. On my own, it never occurred to me that my thinking on this personally cherished idea might have some flaws. And then last year, really exactly a year ago now, I went on a travel learning experience led by Dr. Miguel de la Torre, an ordained Baptist pastor and professor of ethics at Iliff School of Theology. Although he's a prolific writer on many areas of ethics, much of his current emphasis in writing and speaking has been on hope and on hopelessness. Much of what he wants students like me, particularly white, well-intentioned middle-class students, to gain from his travel learning experiences has to do with hope and hopelessness, and who gets to have hope and who tends to be stuck in hopelessness, and the difference that perspective makes on experiencing it. In his writing, De La Torre tells a story from a previous year's learning experience, a travel trip also, when instead of going to the Amazon rainforest, a group visited a big city in Mexico, where they learned from families living with what he described as life-denying poverty, a level of poverty none of the students on the trip had ever experienced firsthand or witnessed in any way before. And in response, one of the young ladies on the trip, probably a student that many of us would have many things in common with, I certainly would. The student made a mistake that I might have made in her place or that I might have wanted to make in her place but have kept to myself. She remarked that, in her words, despite the horrific conditions she'd witnessed, she still saw hope in the eyes of the little girls. Well, that was not the lesson that De La Torre hoped she would get out of the experience, and it wasn't the lesson he wanted me to get out of my experience, and it isn't what he wants students to carry back to the pulpits of the churches that we serve. And so appalled, he replied that within a decade, most of those girls would be selling their bodies or trapped in abusive marriages to put food on the table. Hence, he said, I wasn't sure what kind of hope my students saw in their eyes. Dr. Del Torre takes students to places where people have lived in inhuman conditions for generations and where they will continue living in inhuman conditions for many more generations unless those of us who benefit from the status quo wake up and create change. When we are too quick to jump to hope, if we read it into other people's experience and other people's lives and see it in their eyes without hearing it in what they are telling us. He explains that it, in his words, gets in the way of listening and learning from the oppressed and quickly becomes an excuse not to deal with the reality of injustice. Of course, I never intended for my personal hope to ever be at someone else's expense. But I understand that we all have our blind spots and we all have our limitations and that I am absolutely no different. My experience colors what I can see and understand and what I don't see and don't understand and am too quick to deny. And even as I share my professor's lessons with you, I am quite certain that I am not doing them justice because they are outside my own experience. And so I trust that my personal thoughts and feelings on hope 
are at least helpful insofar as they help me to recognize that today's injustices are in fact not God's will for you, for me, for the oppressed and suffering and ill all over the world. And then I appreciate the danger that I might stop right there, that I will get caught up in hoping and waiting in a way that distracts me from hearing God's call to action and claim on my life. In hope, it is too easy to assume that if God is going to take care of these problems later, that I don't need to do my part to take care of them now. And yet the promise that someday the lion and the lamb will lie down together is of little comfort to all the lambs that have already been devoured. And the promise that someday cows and bears will graze together without incident is of little comfort to the bones of all the cows that the bears have found much tastier than grass. And the promise that someday snakes won't bite infants is of little comfort to those who have already been bitten and poisoned and buried. In Delatore's virtual Easter sermon this year, he encouraged us to be the hope that we are longing for. And in his writings, he's played off of Martin Luther King Jr.'s beloved quote about the arc of the moral universe. King had said the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Delatore challenges us, particularly those of us who claim to follow Jesus in our lives that if we want this moral universe arc to bend it all towards justice, then it is up to us to do the bending. And so in the advent of our lives, during the short days and long dark nights that come at the end of what so many have found to be a dark year, as we light a candle to hope and look both backward and forward to Jesus's coming, as we long for things to get better for ourselves, for others, for the world, and we wonder what our lives will look like when we light that first candle a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, as we remember the call for this to be a time of prayer as individuals and as a community. These Advent seasons of our lives don't have to be wasted on passive, inactive waiting. The Advent seasons of our lives don't have to be the sort of waiting that just kills time and crosses off the days on a calendar looking ahead toward the only day that really matters to us. They don't have to be times when we feel powerless to make a difference, even when the most loving thing we can often do is to stay at home more or to stay further apart. Hoping doesn't have to be the same thing as wishing or pretending or just passing the buck to a higher power to handle it all for us. These Advent seasons are meant to be for preparing ourselves for Christ to be born in us and for us and through us, for making the most of the days that we have as they are even when they happen to be dark or listening to voices that speak the truth. So the challenge that lays before us, as we dare even to mention hope, is that we can decide that we at least want to be the lions who make a change and go vegan. That we can be the bears who at least decide that we want to figure out a way to give up mauling and take up grazing instead. That we at least want to be the snakes that stop biting and striking in fear or in anger, who refuse to spread the poison that we know we are so capable of creating. And that instead we want to be safe company for all the world's infants and sheep and cows and innocents and vulnerable. We can decide that we at least want to learn how to pay attention and to listen and to learn, to repent and to change. That we can at least want to learn what it would mean to work for the day when there would be no more violence and no more bullying and no more injustice 
and oppression when it would be safe for all of us to peacefully lie down with each other. We can decide that we will not stand by quietly when we witness those things that are not of Christ. We can decide that we will not tolerate ourselves being treated in those ways. In some very small way, as servants of the Christ who came before and comes again, it can begin with us. We can prepare for Christ's coming. We can be the candle of hope that lights the world for others. Amen. We stand and join in affirming what we believe with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And as we conclude in prayer, a few concerns on my mind today. First, prayers for Bill and Kathy Fells right across the street. Um, Bill is, of course, fighting cancer um, and had a setback this week and ended up spending Thanksgiving in the hospital and was still in the hospital. The last time I spoke to Kathy, which was fairly late in the afternoon yesterday. So prayers for all of them with the stress that this struggle is putting uh, on each of them. Prayers for Linda Clark working over at Bryn Mawr Hospital. She's asked for us to remember her and her co-workers as her floor has been converted into a COVID wing again. Prayers for Gwen as she faces surgery in a time when it is more intimidating to be going in and having these sorts of things done. Prayers for Sean's friend Judd, who's in the hospital with complications from diabetes that seem to keep unraveling into a worse and worse situation. Are there other things that we should remember today? Mark. for a relative of a friend of Lisa's who passed away this week. Thank you, I'm so glad to see you. And let us pray. Oh, Sandy, go ahead. So Sandy is requesting uh, donations of socks for the residents at the Life C Center or involved with the Life Center. Uh, we'll be going down to feed on the 21st and um, we'll be happy to take any donations that we have at that time. Feel free to just drop them by here at the church and we will get them there. Certainly socks tend to be a desperate need. We've learned that through our work with Connect by Night where uh, once they are wet, uh, they are really a danger to people's health. Is there anything else this morning? Then let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of Advent. We thank you that you love us enough that you come to be with us, that you meet us as we are where we are, for who we are, that you cherish us, that you choose to make us partners in your work in the world, that you give us important tasks to do, that we are called then to spread your love and your hope to those that we know and those that we don't, 
people near and to people far, in situations that we understand and in situations that are too easy for us to ignore. We thank you that we do not face any challenge alone, that we don't face these struggles with only our own wisdom or only our own strength or our own patience, but that you go with us to hold us, to support us, to carry us. And so, Lord, we hand to you all of the moments where we have struggled. We hand to you all the times that we have been frightened. We hand to you all our concerns for the future, or for our loved ones. We hand to you all our expectations for holidays that would look just like the other holidays and open ourselves to the possibility that you could do a new work in and for us. And Lord, we hand to you those who are hurt or struggling, both those that are known to us and those that are all around the world. Lord, we pray for Bill and for Kathy. Lord, we pray for all of those providing Bill's care. Lord, we pray that he would be able to be home we pray for healing and for an easing of his pain. We pray for Linda and for all of those who are serving on her floor in our community, but also for all of those in healthcare who are putting themselves at risk for our safety day in and day out, those in our family of faith and those beyond it. We pray for Gwen as she faces surgery and for Judd as he's in the hospital with new difficulties arising more and more. We pray for all of those who have lost loved ones, and particularly we pray for Lisa's friend and for her entire family, that they would find comfort in you and that we would also be a comfort to them. We pray for all of those who don't have safe places to live, in particular, Lord, today we lift up the residents of the Family Management Center whose Christmas gifts will come from us. And for the people at the Life Center who are dependent on churches and synagogues to feed them because they're unable to support themselves enough to put food on the table. We pray for all of those who don't even have a clean, dry pair of socks. And then we ask that you would show us how to make changes that help them. Lord, we pray for our own moments of worry, and then we ask that you would come. Come, Lord Jesus. We ask all these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then please stand as you are able and join in singing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, which can be found in the back of the bulletin.
God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you might abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia and amen.